Hook, Line, Sinker, Chapter 2 A silence followed the question, and eventually everyone looked to Lucas. He wasn't the oldest of them all, but he was in charge. It was his sensitivity to the paranormal that had brought them all jobs. While Matthias had the filming and editing skills, Emil the writing and blogging skills, Bervold had the muscle and could secure shields of strong positive energy. But Lucas had brought them all together, what with his ability to sense and communicate with the spirit realm, and exercise them when needed. He was the boss, and made the decisions. Lucas wiped his mouth on a napkin, and took a deep breath, and said, I don't know. They continued to stare at him for a second, before he followed up his admission with, We've never had to take something mythical home with us before. That's not for Emil's lack of trying, of course. Just one cute, harmless spirit to keep as a pet, please. Matthias teased. Emil frowned at him. A pet is one thing. This is a person, Bervold said seriously. He's right, Lucas agreed. We can't assume to keep him, but we can't just let him go either. He doesn't know anything about this world. How would we even let him go anyway? Emil asked stirring his stew absently. Put him back in the sea? I mean, he's human now. Lucas twisted his mouth a bit, as he did whenever he was deep in thought, trying to solve a particularly challenging mystery. The fact is, we don't know why he was so far inland. I can't think of any way that a merman could get marooned that far up in the hills, nearly into the mountains. Even if he could come this far on his own, why? What reason would he have to flee his home? Maybe he was in danger, Bervil tried, being chased by his own people. I have read a hypothesis about the judicial system of underwater folk, if they exist, Lucas supplied thoughtfully. It was theorized that stranding a mer person on land would be a form of punishment, possible banishment for crimes serious enough to warrant severe punishment, but not so severe as a death sentence. More than one eyebrow lifted around the table. They're all used to Lucas and his ability to remember nearly everything he read, and he did read a mountain of research to reinforce his knowledge of all realms of oddity. Still, that didn't mean that at times some of the more obscure texts contained theories bordering on insane ramblings. How can we know anything about the justice system of a mythological community? Matthias asked blandly. We can't. But like I said, it was just a theory. And even if it was true, protested Emil, that sweet-faced boy doesn't seem like a criminal. Criminals on the run rarely do, Lucas said softly. But this is all conjecture, so we're not going to start treating him like a murderer. Relax. Could he have been captured? Bervold suggested. Perhaps he managed to escape and ended up where he was. What? Like he was on a truck or something and just flopped out? Matthias asked around a mouthful of bread. But if he was captured, Lucas thought aloud, don't you think he'd be more afraid of us? Well, we were helping him, not treat him like an object or an animal, Emil tried. We won't know until we ask him. If he can actually tell us, Matthias brought up again, like I said, we don't know if he can actually speak. Even if he can't right now, he can pick it up. You can't know a language but not be able to speak it, right? We'll just have to wait and find out. You're right, Lucas agreed with his brother. I think we'll just have to sit tight for now. We'll keep him here and see what happens next. Our views and donations are going to go through the roof, Matthias said excitedly. Not only do we have the rescue of a real-life merman on camera, we can also document everything else that happens from here on out. Maybe do a live stream or two. Oh, this is a gold mine. Lucas sighed. Bervold seemed to start zoning out, but Emil immediately began to show interest. However often they went back and forth busting each other's chops, Emil and Matthias always worked well together when it came to running the website. If we're going to commit to an ongoing story like this, we'll need to think of a title pretty quickly. No problem, Matthias said at once. This story just about writes itself. Merman Rescue SOS, or A Merman's Tale. Something like that. Emil rolled his eyes. Too trite. It needs to be more simple and compelling. Angel of the Sea. 
Stranded on land. Emil shot him an unimpressed look. Way too long. Well, didn't you think he looked like a fallen angel at first glance? Matthias argued. On the ground, covered by all that golden hair. Yes. They all turned in surprise to look at Bervold, who had spoken. He maintained his neutral face, but could not conceal the slight pink tinge to his cheeks. Emil tried to move the conversation forward again. Anyway... No, 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 Matthias cut off his effort to evade, a devious grin on his face. He leaned mischievously closer to the man beside him, grinning from ear to ear. Bear, do you like our little fish boy? Just answering your question, Bevel shot back. He did look like an angel. I thought he was a girl at first. To be fair, I think we all did, Lucas commented. I don't know how well we're going to be able to maintain hair that long. It is going to be a pain to brush out in the morning, Emil agreed. It'll be great footage, though, Matthias said with his mouth full. I'm telling you, this could make our careers. Was supposed to be a vacation, Bervold mumbled. Screw that, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. He's right, Emil said. Posting this as an ongoing video journal will at least get us more attention. Even though some people will cry fraud like they always do, those who do think it's fake will still be impressed because they'll think we're doing improv the entire time, and it'll still be amazing. That's why we can't turn the camera off if we can help it, Matthias said, fairly trembling with excitement. We'll have to use the charger with the extra long cord so we can keep the battery up when it starts getting low, and use the tripod when we're all in one place. Anything we can do to show that we're not staging anything... Every time we cut it gives more credibility to the fraud suspicion. Lucas swirled his water in his glass, listening to the conversation for a while before chiming in. Just be sure you don't overwhelm him. I think the very nature of his rescue is enough to overwhelm him, Emil laughed. After that, something like having Matthias in your face with his camera isn't that traumatizing. He'll be okay, Bevold intoned. He'll just chirp if he doesn't like something. And you would know, wouldn't you, Bervold? Matthias jeered. After hearing him do it so many times, how could you break his heart that way and try to leave him alone in this strange bed and strange house? Bevel didn't answer. He just scraped the bottom of his bowl with his spoon, chasing the last remnants of his stew. Didn't I tell you to leave Bevold alone? Lucas reprimanded. The man likes him. That's good for us. At least he's not terrified of us all. That would make this impossibly harder. Emil ran his fingers through his hair, and leaned his head back on his chair. As if this isn't going to be hard already. None of them could argue with that. Not even Matthias's overwhelming optimism felt tempted to object. After dinner, Matthias planted himself in the chair nearest to the fireplace in the great room, and plugged the camera into his laptop. For over an hour, The sounds of his editing would cut into the otherwise tranquil silence of the lodge as he stopped and paused the footage to add pixelation and adjust lighting and sound. Similarly, Emil joined him a little while later with his own laptop, curling up at one end of the big sofa. He had abandoned his previous article and was instead working on the one they were posted along with the video. His fingers flew over the keys as he typed, trying to capture with words every mood, every emotion every faucet of that evening's great surprise. Every now and then, the two would bounce ideas and suggestions off each other as they worked on their own projects. Their working relationship was always good, even if their personal one was a bit touchy. It was unofficially in the rulebook that a brother had to frown upon anyone stealing their sibling away with romance, even if it did make them happy. But, if nothing else... Both Emil and Matthias loved telling stories in their own creative way, and creative people always got along well on some level. Meanwhile, Bervold and Lucas sat around in different chairs in the great room, reading their books. Lucas had his earbuds in, listening to some soothing music on his iPod as he read, but Bervold seemed unable to focus on reading, let alone the idea of listening to music at the same time. He kept blinking and having to refocus on the page. While Emil and Matthias were discussing something across the room, Lucas sighed and put down his book, pulling out his earbuds. What's the matter? 
he asked. You keep turning that page back and forth. It's distracting. What's on your mind? Bervold grunted and lowered his book to lay on his lap. What if he wakes up in the night and gets scared? Lucas shrugged. He'll remember where he is after a bit. Bervold's frown softened as he looked concerned. He could fall out of bed and get hurt if it's dark. You left the light on in the hallway. Is his door cracked open? Bervold nodded. Then he'll have plenty of light to see by if he does wake up. Why are you so worried? Bright blue-green eyes avoided Lucas's inquisitive stare, flitting to the side before dropping his book on his lap. Don't want him to be scared. Lucas said nothing at first, studying Bervold. He knew all too well part of what was troubling his friend. Still, there was something else. You really do like him, don't you? Lucas asked simply. Bervold said nothing. Well... Just don't get too attached. You know how it usually goes with wild things. Eventually, they have to go back to their true home. Bervold set his jaw, still staying silent. Lucas rubbed at his chin and tried again. You're not going to frighten him. Do you think he would have been clinging to you the entire evening if he was terrified of you? Do you think he would have demanded you stay by his side while he was falling asleep? You should know by now that good-intentioned inhuman beings are receptive to you. Why should a merman be any different? The big man's finger played with the page of his book for a moment, thinking over Lucas's words. He finally sighed and closed his eyes. Guess there's no way to know until morning. Despite a few more encouragements, Lucas could see that Bervold's old insecurity was rearing its ugly head, and so he stopped after a while. It had been a year or two since he had seen the man like this. They had functioned so well as a family unit, accepting Bervold effortlessly into their ranks, that he hadn't needed to worry about other people's opinions for a while. The internet had clearly showed its love for him as part of their group, but when it came to meeting new people in person, Bervold still worried about scaring them off with his intense aura. As to whether the merman would fear him once he gained back his wits, they truly had no choice but to wait and see. They all stayed up extremely late, as they always did during this vacation week. Matthias and Emil managed to finish up their editing and writing, and together posted the story to their websites, along with the video. They left Matthias' laptop open and on when they went to bed, simply because it would take forever to upload the full video, and they were already exhausted. A quick check on the merman before bed showed him to be in the same position Bervold had left him, sleeping soundly. Even with this assurance, hardly any of them passed the night without waking up a few times and wondering if he was alright. Once during the night, Emil and Bervold nearly collided in the hallway, as they had both decided to get up and see if their guest was alright. By the time morning rolled around, everyone had at least managed to get a few solid hours of sleep enough to be somewhat human when they began to filter down to the great room. In the pale light of the morning, their view was gorgeous. The huge windows in the great room showed the thick forests surrounding them, and the birds that were flocking to the bird feeder planted by one of the main windows. Heavy mist hung over the ground and through the tops of the trees, obscuring their view of the distant hilltops they'd all come to know so well. The morning light was dimmed by heavy clouds, but it was no longer raining, at least. Morning, Lucas called when he saw Bervold coming down the stairs. Coffee? Bervold nodded grimly, rubbing at his face. Lucas continued preparing the coffee as Bervold restarted the fire that had died down in the night. Did you check on him last night? Lucas asked. Yeah, thought so. I did too, more than once. Bervold gave Lucas the closest expression to a smirk that he could manage so early in the morning, and Lucas even grinned back a bit. He didn't really move much, though, did he? Bervold said. Wasn't the same place all night. Exhaustion can immobilize you in sleep, Lucas pointed out, then paused in concern before saying, though we should probably look in on him again, just to be sure. Bervold caught on to the worry in Lucas's voice, and his mouth opened slightly as his eyes widened. Without another word, the two of them turned and hurried up the stairs. Neither of them said it, but they knew why the other was flustered. 
Usually everyone moved at least a little in their sleep. When they poked their heads around the door, the merman still looked like he hadn't moved. He was still lying on his stomach in the bed, covered to his neck with the blanket, one hand on the pillow by his cheek where Belvold had tucked it last night when he left. They both cautiously stepped into the room, unknowingly holding their breath. Lucas knelt beside the bed and watched the merman's face intently. A tenth second later, he relaxed. He's breathing, he declared softly. Bervold let out a sigh of relief as well, having to shake himself a little. Lucas reached out and placed the back of his hand against the merman's forehead, testing his temperature. Nice and warm, but no fever. At the touch of his hand and the sound of his soft voice, the merman's eyes fluttered a bit. His steady breathing faltered, and then started up again, more quickly. Then those two lovely violet-blue eyes blinked open. They opened and closed a few times then, before focusing on the two of them standing over him. He only looked briefly confused before he relaxed. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Lucas asked. The merman nodded groggily, rubbing at his eyes with a hand. He then winced as he rolled over onto his back. A small popping sound was heard as he arched a bit. He didn't move at all last night, Lucas chuckled. Saw her. A huge yawn answered Lucas's inquiry, and then the merman carefully stretched his arms out above him. He held them there for a second, then let them drop heavily onto the mattress. He looked a bit irritated, and tried the motion again, stretching deliberately far. He lowered his arms with more control this time, but still let them bounce as they hit the covers. When he tried to sit up, however... One of his arms went out from under him and he fell back again, resulting in a short yelp. The merman looked startled. Careful now, Lucas said, sitting on the side of the bed in case he was needed. You're not really used to gravity yet, are you? A voice from behind them answered. He doesn't even know what gravity is. They all looked toward the new voice and saw Matthias standing there in the open doorway, camera in his hand. Lucas rolled his eyes. I thought you were still asleep. Yeah, that's why you snuck in here to wake up the mythological being without telling me. Bervold and Lucas both looked annoyed. I was hoping to give him some privacy. He's fine, look at him. Matthias gestured to the merman who was gazing at the camera, apparently unconcerned, rubbing his cheek with the back of one hand. The sleeve of Bervold's sweater came down over his fingers, and he seemed to enjoy rubbing the soft fabric against his skin. We should check out his legs. Matthias suggested, taking another step closer. Lucas nodded. I suppose you're right. Is that okay? He asked the merman, who nodded. Cautiously, he moved to sit up, successfully staying upright this time. He rolled his head on his shoulders a few times, wincing and rubbing at the back of his neck, undoubtedly suffering from sleeping on his stomach all night. Lucas helped him pull the covers down to expose his legs and feet. They were delicate, white, but looked perfectly healthy. The merman reached out with both hands and stroked over his shins, wide-eyed with wonder. He flexed his feet a little and broke out into a smile. It lit up his already sweet face and made him look even more beautiful. Are you still hurting? Lucas asked. The merman shook his head, still smiling. That's good, Bervold said. Matthias swiveled the camera to focus on the big man's face. Then back to Lucas and the merman on the bed. Look at that, he exclaimed, drawing right up to the bed. Your feet look fine now. The merman nodded empathetically, and shifted his hips a little, pulling himself over to the edge of the mattress. He then slowly swung his legs over the side. Lucas reached out as though to steady him if he fell. The merman swayed back and forth a bit, reminiscing on how something underwater would move to propel itself forward. Think he wants to stand up. Bervold said. Any reason he shouldn't, Lucas? Matthias asked. The other man shook his head. Not that I can think of. He appears to be fully changed and adapted. Might as well give it a try sooner rather than later. Then help him, Bervold. Doing as Matthias said, without noticing the glint in its bright blue eyes, Bervold leaned down toward the merman, offering his hand. Easy does it, he said. The merman looked excited, but nervous. He nodded at Bervold, laying his hands to hold tight on his strong forearms. All right, three, two, one. Bervold pulled, 
hefting the little blonde to his feet. With a great gasp, the merman held on and balanced shakily, bent over a bit at the waist, his eyes wide with unease, his long hair dropped around his back and the hips and curtains of gold hanging down to his knees. First time standing on your new legs, Matthias declared, to which the merman smiled and nodded. Want to take a step? Bevold asked softly. The merman looked up at him, which took some doing considering their height difference, and he bit his full bottom lip in contemplation. His slender legs were already beginning to shake. You can sit right back down any time you want, Lucas assured him. But if you want to try walking, don't worry. Bevold won't let you fall. The merman glanced at each of their faces in turn, before cautiously shifting his weight and sliding a foot forward. Leaning heavily on Bearvolt for support, he took a single step, legs trembling the whole time. Well done, fish boy, Matthias said happily. Try it again. Encouraged by Matthias' enthusiasm, the merman took a few more slow trembling steps with Bearvolt's help before he blew a breath out of his cheeks and stood still again. That should be a good starting point for now. Lucas said, sit him back down. Bervold wordlessly picked the merman up by his waist, receiving one of those startled chirrups in response, and sat him on the edge of the bed in two strides. Wow, that sound is so cool. Can you do it again? The merman ducked his head shyly, before lifting it again to give another chirp. Wicked sweet. Did I miss something? Emil's voice came from the doorway. He was still in his pyjamas, rubbing at his face and yawning. There were faint circles beneath his stormy blue eyes. He had stayed up later than all of them to work on the website. Ah, oh, dude, you missed the merman's first step. Emil's mouth opened in surprise, and he looked at all of them as though they had purposefully conspired to leave him out. For a second, he seemed genuinely upset to have missed such a significant moment, but then he shrugged it off. That's good news. Are we going to have breakfast? Matthias got playfully close to Emil's face with the camera making him cringe and step back a bit. Do you even have a heart? He demanded of the ruffled teen. This ancient mythological creature of the deep just took his first steps on land, and all you can think about is breakfast? Lucas and Bevel sighed in unison as Emil grunted out. It's only natural that he'd walk at some point now that he has feet, you moron. Besides, he's got to be hungrier than any of us after everything he's been through. As the two were bickering, the merman reached out and tugged on Lucas's sleeve. Yes, what is it? The merman looked toward Mill and then back at Lucas. He made an exaggerated biting motion with his mouth, then rubbed his belly. You're hungry, of course, all right. I'll go get breakfast on the stove. You two? He pointed at Matthias and Emil. Out. Let the poor boy have some space first thing in the morning. He crossed the room and reached for something that was folded on the floor right outside in the hallway, and picked it up, and then held the item out to Bearvold. Bevold, you see if he'll consent to wearing these. I thought of it earlier and put them out here for that purpose. Are those my track pants? Emil asked in disbelief and annoyance. Bevold opened his mouth to protest, but Lucas was shuffling Emil and a protesting Matthias out into the hallway, and a second later had closed the door on him. <laughs>